Hi right, guys. It is an unbelievably spectacularly gorgeous, and I do mean over the top beautiful spring day here in the end times in the Point Lonesome Swamp. Uh, it is a gorgeous Wednesday morning, March 10th, 2021, and I have got to get out there and do battle with this fucking gas-sucking lawnmower because the Amazon rainforest has moved north uh, and I gotta get out there and do some deforestation uh, <clears throat> before I am consumed but before I do I uh, just want to check in with the Humpty Dumpty Tribe mailbag and I guess we're just gonna have to name this channel the uh, the Fear Chronicles uh, I guess we have the subject of fear. So I'm just going to read some of the comments from this. I honestly don't know if this is a fellow or not. Uh, Matrix Abtalung. Matrix Abtalung. I have no, maybe that's a uh, European word. Anyways, what I love is, is people... And I do appreciate you watching my videos, but, but I love how people will, uh, will watch somebody on YouTube, I guess particularly a fictional character on YouTube, and just just arrogantly, uh, just based on, on a few uh, snippets out, out of YouTube videos from a fictional character, how they d d just act like they just fucking... Uh, know everything about this person. They, 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 you know, that just the condescending snottiness uh, uh, of people. And then maybe this guy or this woman is a very nice person. I don't know. Uh, anyway, what does Matrix have to say? <clears throat> this is in response to my uh, video yesterday. To be alone or not alone. It is about somebody or nobody. All right. You changed your lifestyle to one of solitude because you are afraid civilization is going to collapse. Mad Max will set where lawless gangs take over so you feel more secure on the outskirts. The price for that fear-based lifestyle is loneliness. Yes. And uh, all I really had time to say to Matrix at that point was, there is a thin line between being afraid civilization is going to collapse and having no doubt that it is. Doubt is the biggest ingredient of fear lose your doubt over something and you lose most of your fear and then Matrix came back to that comment okay you have no doubt that civilization is going to collapse it is a certainty and despite being a social person you have chosen to live in isolated locations because you fear Mad Max conditions which you know for certain are coming. You have headed for the hills and swamps, but it is a catch-22. Out of fear of being near to more populated areas, a new fear arises. Fear of loneliness. And it goes on from there. You can find... You, you can find... Uh, this... Uh, these comments the rest of these comments, and I do appreciate Matrix uh, being such a uh, such a uh, psychologist after knowing me as well as this person does. So anyway, good go good Lord, guys. I, I, I don't even know where to uh, dive into this. Okay, first about, let, let's just talk about my fear of Mad Max. Uh, and that the, the, the 
changes I made in my lifestyle were based on fear of the collapse of civilization and the onset of Mad Max. Uh, good God, where to start? First of all, one more time, uh, making it clear, I am not one of these people who play the date game. I do not put a date. I, it, it is not a question of if, it is a question of when this whole shit show House of Cards is coming down. No shit Sherlock, but I have no idea uh, when it's coming down. Uh, I now the the more I look at the handwriting on the wall, uh, I think it's coming sooner uh, than I probably first thought it was. But uh, to say that I quit a a six figure job. Let's see, moved out of a beautiful home on the South Austin Green Belt, gave up uh, hundreds of friends, uh, gave up the absolute uh, life of Riley, is what we call in South Austin, Texas, living in the velvet rut. Uh, is uh, to, to say that I made that decision based out of fear of Mad Max is, is, is absolutely preposterous. I invite Mr. Matrix or Ms. Matrix to go listen to about the first three years of uh, my, my videos. Uh, it, it had nothing to do with it. Uh, it I, I hadn't even thought about it that much. When I made my decision <clears throat> in 2008, to unplug from the dominant cultural paradigm, uh, it was not a reactive decision, it was a proactive decision. Uh, th th these are very subtle, uh, but, but, but very important differences. Uh, it was, well, uh, of, of course, you know, part of the deal uh, probably had to do with, you know, being deep into the teachings of Don Juan Matus and Carlos Castaneda, or Castaneda or Don Juan or whoever you want to call him, you know, pointing out correctly <clears throat> that any decision that you make out of fear or panic uh, if, 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 you're, if you need to make a decision, uh, a, you know, a major decision in your life, and, and it's coming from a place of fear or a place of panic, it's going to be the wrong decision. All right, reacting to fear by making a, a decision, uh, you are guaranteed to make the wrong decision. So uh, part of it was my, uh, was my Don Juan training. Then of course I met um, uh, Terrence McKenna, well, you know, on video. I bumped into the works of Terrence McKenna in November of 2007 and listening to hundreds if not thousands of hours of Terrence McKenna uh, it, explaining how the world works and then he in turn uh, you know got me uh, in in the spring of 2008 to uh, to check out hallucinogens and for for those of you who who do not know this story I for three months in the year 2008, when I was in the middle of a very successful real estate career, Austin, Texas was not hit by the, the real estate market in Austin, Texas was the least affected by the shit going down in the, in the global economy in 2008. My decision uh, to quit my real estate career in 2008 
had nothing to do with that whole global economic thing, and it sure as shit had nothing to do with fear of Mad Max. Uh, so in the springtime, on Terrence McKenna's advice, uh, you know, for three months running, and one month I did a heroic dose of magic mushrooms. Uh, the next month uh, I did my first uh, ayahuasca trip, and the third month I had the single wildest uh, trip of my life with San Pedro cactus, uh, which is the San Pedro cactus, this is, what this is, is mescaline. It's the same shit as in peyote. All right, and you can buy this at Walmart. So anyone who has not heard about, you know, it was that San Pedro cactus trip was the final trigger uh, that turned me from a, a clueless fucking moron, uh, you know, living the life that 99% of people uh, would trade their lives for to becoming a doomsday prophet and the chronicler of the collapse of Western civilization and an environmental alarmist and all of that. And it was certainly San Pedro Cactus, along with uh, psilocybin mushrooms and ayahuasca, which is DMT, the uh, teachings of Terence McKenna, and the teachings of Don Juan, that got me to recognize that my, my beautiful life uh, in the velvet rut of South Austin was uh, was a spiritually bankrupt, morally reprehensible, uh, a, a, a planet eating, just uh, these these are the airboats you're hearing <clears throat> here in the peaceful peaceful swamp. But I'm not getting into an airboat rant. Uh, Anyway, but this is a, a, an example. I probably, in, in 2008, I pro I'm surprised I didn't own a, a fucking airboat. Let's see, what did I have? I had, you know, two cars. I had my nice real estate sales car. I had my nice truck with the, uh, with the dirt worshiping tree hugger bumper sticker on it. I, uh, you know, I was living in my, this is, uh, this right here, guys, we're, we're just going to let this airboat speak for itself. I don't, there's nothing I can say uh, about this airboat that this airboat cannot say for itself. This is one boat that everybody within about a six mile radius can hear. Bye bye airboat. So anyway, uh, so, uh, you know, I was living in a four, I was a single bachelor, no kids to support, living in a four bedroom, three bath house with my two cars, two refrigerators. One refrigerator wasn't enough. I, I had a, a bunch of rental houses. Uh, my dream, my dream in, in 2007 was to own 40 houses. That if, that if somehow, if, 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 if I could just own 40 houses, a, a, a one single childless bachelor, maybe if I could just build my real estate portfolio to uh, where instead of owning five or six houses, however many it was I owned, and just owned 40 houses, that would fill what uh, the late great uh, songwriter David Olney, Olney would call the, uh, the God-sized hole in my heart. Uh, it, it, it took 
uh, obviously Carlos Castaneda, who lived in a, you know, living in that mansion, that childless bachelor living in that mansion in Malibu all those years, he did not convince me. But uh, between Terrence McKenna, the magic mushrooms, the ayahuasca, and the San Pedro cactus, uh, convince me that for a, I was 49 years old, that a 49 year old man uh, to have as his number one driving goal in life was to own 40 houses. Uh, that that I had, I had somehow along the way, and, and, and driving around with a dirt worshiping tree hugger bumper sticker uh, on my gas sucking truck, uh, it was the realization that I was a clueless fucking moron. Okay. Uh, I, I was living in a velvet rut. Uh, you know, as long as you're living in a rut, it might as well be lined with velvet. It was a very comfortable rut. Uh, sure as shit, more comfortable than my life has been since I made the decision in January of 2009 uh, to pull the plug on uh, the dominant cultural paradigm. As Terence McKenna says, culture is not your friend. To turn my back on, on, on this uh, cradle to grave uh, assault uh, on, on our brains that we all, uh, that we all are, are, are hammered with. And, 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 and find the courage in overcoming the fear to step out of your comfort zone. I did not step out of my cult, uh, out of my comfort zone. I, I did a flying belly flop out of my culture zone. And uh, went, you know, went from this beautiful home in South Austin, Texas, to uh, living in a tiny house in the Peruvian Amazon jungle. And, and here I am 13 years later. Uh, you know, I, I have a, I, do I own one or two houses now? Uh, I own a 384 square foot shack uh, in New York. I own a, this, my camper is 18 by 6, about a 100 square foot camper and a 12 by 16 foot outdoor kitchen. So you add up uh, everything I own here and in, and in New York and it's about half the size of one of the houses I owned. Uh, 13 years ago. Now, this whole thing about loneliness, the, this, the, the, this man or woman uh, matrix, it, it, you know, is somewhat uh, correct about this. Obviously, obviously, when you make the decision to do something that 99.9% .9 of the planet uh, it, it, it considers the decision of an absolute fucking lunatic madman who obviously had a bad mushroom trip uh, to walk away from the life uh, that I had in, in, in 2008 when, when I pulled my head out of my clueless fucking moron ass uh, about how completely uh, wrong my life was. Everything about my life was wrong. It was damn comfortable, uh, but it was wrong. Uh, and, and, and to, uh, you know, I've, I've mentioned this research before 
uh, the, the psychological research that says the the drive, the urge to protect what you already have is actually larger than the human drive to to procure more. All of this stuff about, you know, as hard as we work to get more, 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 uh, it is once we get the more, more, more and surround ourselves with, with more and more and more of this planet-eating shit, the, the, the fear of losing that, it, it actually, the, the fear of losing it, the, the drive to protect your, your little uh, whatever uh, that you have uh, collected in your own life to fill this own God-sized hole in your heart. It, it is bigger uh, than, than the drive, uh, you know, to get more of this shit even. And that's bad enough. And, and, and to walk away from all of that just to pull the fucking plug on the beautiful home, uh, the friends, the pussy, uh, the top shelf margaritas, uh, and, and head off uh, in, in, you know, in, into the Peruvian Amazon rainforest to await the end of the world. Uh, it, it, it takes fucking balls. Okay, it takes balls. And, uh, and anybody who has never done it uh, has no right to fucking tell me it doesn't take fucking balls to do what, what, I, what I did. Now, uh, of, of course, the, the, the whole loneliness thing, uh, obviously no shit Sherlock, brother or sister, whoever you are, uh, the loneliness is the number one price you are going to pay. Okay, I will say in 13 years of hindsight that getting rid of all of this material possession baggage, which I have reduced out of my life by 90-95%, I do not miss the material possessions. This crap is crap. Okay, let it the fuck go. Let the shit go. Uh, but uh, obviously, the loneliness. You're, I mean, you're going to lose friends. Uh, in the, I, I honestly did not believe. Uh, you know that this whole loss of uh, of female a female partner in my life was an unintentional byproduct. I, I didn't you know how many times have I said you know my buddies <clears throat> who even like go hambone we, we we I guess we can get why you did why you walked away from all that other stuff, but how you could walk away from pussy. I did not walk away from pussy. I, I just did not. Uh, I, it just. It, I guess it just did not occur to me uh, that I was going to be walking away from pussy uh, when when I chose to make this decision uh, in, in my life. It was not an intentional decision. Uh, but but obviously. Uh, the, the loss of, of female company, uh, you know, my God, uh, there, there, there's not a goddamn woman on the planet uh, who would have, uh, imagine if I had been married when I made this decision. Uh, I, can, I can imagine what my wife would have said uh, when I announced that decision. Uh, so now, you know, my, my, my single biggest fear, as I, as I mentioned, right now, my single biggest fear for the rest of my life is that I am going to grow old, feeble, whatever, start falling apart alone. And uh, the, that is the thought. 
and uh, so I guess right now, because I, I still have doubt, and maybe if I would just uh, erase all doubt and just uh, admit that I will never find a, a, a woman, a female partner, to walk this path with me uh, the rest of my life, if, if I would just fucking admit it and erase the doubt, uh, then, and, and just make myself certain that I will die uh, alone and celibate and everything else, uh, maybe I, I could erase this fear and then I would just replace it with dread. Dread, what dread is, is fear with no doubt. You get rid of the doubt and your fear becomes dread. That is, uh... <laughs> anyway, that, that's a whole subject. The, the whole uh, rant about dread, the difference between fear and dread, I'm going to leave that for a, 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 another day. But the problem is with my fear of dying uh, alone and celibate and all of that is I am certain that the woman exists on this planet. There is a female living on this planet right now, not many of them, but there's probably more than one. Somewhere on this fucking planet, I am 100% sure there is a woman that would look at what I have to offer her, my lifestyle, uh, my choices, where I am in my life. There is a woman that would say, what does this jackass have to offer? And she would be interested in joining me. I am 100% sure she exists out there, but I am after 13 years of trying to find her, I'm beginning to doubt that I'm ever going to find her. So as long as I am convinced that, you know, that my Dulcinea, you know, Don Juan always uh, convinced that his Dulcinea, uh, as long as I am convinced that my Dulcinea exists, I am going to keep looking for her, my chaotic quest. It is genuinely, if, if, if any quest, uh, <laughs> if, if, if any quest uh, meets the definition of a chaotic quest, it would be Hambone looking for his Doomer chick, his Doomer chick Dulcinea. But I, I know she's out there, and as long as I am not convinced that I am uh, never going to find her, I'm going to keep living in doubt, and which probably means I will be living in fear of being the lonely, bitter old man uh, that I am, that I have become every day. I, I become lonelier and more and more bitter and, uh, and fucking pissed off uh, at myself and the world. But uh, that is my main regret and, uh, out of my decision over the last 13 years. It's not the beautiful home, the nice cars, uh, all of that. Uh, it, it is uh, that once you go down this rabbit hole, you will be lonely. But I got my little dog. And as long as I have my little dog, uh, all is not lost. Now, when I lose this little dog, all will be lost. Uh, but until then, <clears throat> me and the little dog are going to go, we're going to wrap up this rant and uh, head out there into this spectacularly gorgeous day on the planet and go to war with a gas-sucking lawnmower so I can go to war with the Amazon rainforest. If any Doomer chick listening to this wants to join me on this chaotic quest, 
you know where to find me and the little dog here at the end of the road in the Point Lonesome Swamp. Bye, guys. Are you ready to get out there and do some war with a gas-sucking lawnmower? Bye, guys.